July 27th, more. After the most amazing meal we've ever had, we both got filet mignon and these huge baked potatoes and dinner rolls and asparagus shoots and then cheesecake for dessert. Me and Rondell walked along the border until we made it back down to the beach. It's crazy how they do the fence when it gets to the water, by the way. Thick, rusty posts curling toward TJ, going all the way into the ocean. The waves break right around them, and you can see them perfect because they got these Border Patrol vans parked right there on the sand, shining their headlights over the border part of the water. One thing you figure out quick is America doesn't play when it comes to letting Mexicans sneak in their country. Me and Rondell leaned against a couple posts in the sand outside of the van's line of vision and rested our hands on our full stomachs. I took out the leather petty cash envelope from my bag and counted the cash we had left, $386. Then I counted out half of it and held out the cash for Rondell. What this is for, he said. Tomorrow, man, when you go to Mexico. He stared at it for a few more seconds and then a look of understanding went onto his face like he just remembered what he was doing tomorrow. Oh, he said, smiling. Thanks, Mexico. The guy was just holding the money in his hand like he didn't know what to do with it next. So I told him, go on and put that shit away, man. You better not lose it either. I won't, Mexico. Or waste it on no hookers. I won't. Or on one of them donkey shows. He looked up at me, confused. What do you mean a donkey show? I cracked up a little and waved him off. Nah, man, you don't even want to know. I'm just saying, you got to make that last until you find a way to get more. I could make it last, he said. He folded the bills in half and pushed them into his bag. Then he thought better of it, pulled them back out, and slipped them in his jeans pocket. What you going to do with yours, he said. I was just thinking about that restaurant, I said. How much we start with? Like 750 right? Rondell shrugged. I think it was 750 Anyways, I'm going to find a way to pay it back, man. I don't know how yet, or if it'll take me forever, but that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to mail it back to the lighthouse. Rondell started smiling like maybe I was messing with him. I get it, Mexico. You're playing with me. You ain't really sending back no money. I put it on everything, I said. I don't like how we stole Jaden's cash, you know? Leaving is one thing because it's on us, but taking a group home's money isn't cool. Why do you think so? It just doesn't feel right. Rondell stared at his shoes for a little, and then he looked at, up at me and said, I don't think it's right, neither. I watched him pull the money halfway out of his pocket and then look at it and shove it back in. We were both quiet for a little while. I looked at the Border Patrol vans just sitting there, shining their lights on the water. For some reason, I didn't worry about them that much. I knew they weren't like real cops. They only cared about finding illegal aliens trying to come into America. They didn't give a shit about me and Rondell. I picked up a rock and thought how weird it was that people call them aliens, like they're from outer space and look like damn Martians, all green with big-ass Rondell heads. And it's not just aliens, but illegal ones, too. I wonder who made up that term. And how weird is it they put cops all along the border so no Mexicans could sneak in, but on the other side, was it was straight crickets. Nobody was there making sure American people like me and Rondell didn't sneak into Mexico. Shit like that is weird if you really stop and think about it. How a normal conversation usually goes when you're talking to Rondell. You know what, Mexico, Rondell said, smelling his hands. I could eat that mignon food every single day. I laughed a little, said, yeah, man, but your ass would go broke in a week. I reached into Rondell's bag for the catcher and the rye, pulled it out and flipped to the page I was on. When I get rich, I mean, Rondell said, pulling out his Bible. Oh, I see, I told him, looking up from my book. And how you plan on getting rich, Mr. Trump? You think you could catch that many fish? He shrugged as he opened the front cover. Maybe I might win the lottery, he said. You ever think about that one, Mexico? Where, in Tijuana? I pictured Rondell in some taco hut in deep Mexico, ghetto fishing pole laying across his lap as he sat there scratching off Mexican lotto tickets. I shook my head, cracking up. How many pesos you think they gonna give you if you win, man? He shrugged and gave me a confused look. What's pesos mean? That's the money they use. Why? I closed up my book and looked at him a sec. I knew I'd be going down a pointless road if I answered his question, but at the same time, man, what else was there to talk about, you know? And since this was our last night together, I thought I should maybe talk with Rondell as much as he wanted to talk. Okay, look, I said, you know the money you got in your pocket right now? He nodded. Those are dollars, right? Dollars are American money, but every country has their own kind. In Mexico, it's pesos. A frown came over his face. He looked down at his hands, shaking his head. But that don't make no sense, Mexico. What doesn't? He looked up again. They should just use dollars and cents like everybody else. 
I just told you, though, I said, every place has its own kind of money. But how come? Because they're a different country, man. Randall thought about that for a sec. Then he told me, wouldn't it be more easier if everybody used the same kind? Probably. So why don't they do it then? I set my book in the sand next to me. Check it out, though. Some places are a far-ass ways away, like New Zealand or Iceland. Of course they're going to do their own thing over there. He pointed over his shoulder. But Mexico's right there behind us. I looked at him, shaking my head. I could tell I was about to get mad frustrated. I took a deep breath, said, America wasn't even the first country, Rondo. Most countries are way older than us. Rondell nodded his head, thinking that one over. You could tell the guy thought it was some kind of deep-ass important conversation we were having by how he was stroking his chin and squinting up his eyes. Okay, then what was the first one, he said. I pulled my hood up over my head. I'm pretty sure it was Rome or some shit. Where's Rome? In Italy. And what kind of money does Italy use? I think euros. Rondell held out his hands. Then everybody should just use that kind of money, since it was the first kind. I shook my head. Nah, man, it wasn't the first kind, though. The first kind of money wasn't even money. People traded shit, like ten chickens for a pig, or a sack of coffee, or a crate of corn, shit like that. So what if you didn't have no chickens, though, he said. Then people couldn't never get themselves a pig? That don't seem right. Maybe they could trade something else, I said, like a goat or a bunch of clothes. It wasn't like there was a set thing you had to trade to get a pig, man. That's ignorant. I ain't eat pork anyway, Rondell said. He shook his head. My aunt told me pigs is the dirtiest animal. She said we ain't supposed to eat them because it'll make humans dirty too. I rolled my eyes at Rondell. I had to shut this meaningless conversation down or else who knows what he'd start talking about. Anyways, I said, Mexico's lottery is in pesos, man. That's all I was saying. Now, if you'll excuse me, dog, I got a damn book to read. I reached in Rondell's bag again, pulled out the three books I'd yet to get to and stashed them in my own bag. Rondell watched me do this and a look of sadness went into his eyes. Like him not carrying my books no more made it official we were splitting up. He lowered his face, flipped the page in his Bible, scanned his finger across a couple times. Then Rondell takes shit to a whole nother level. We both read for about a half hour and then I heard Rondell giggling a little so I looked up. He was staring at where we'd walked down to the beach from with this big ass grin on his face. I knew it wasn't the smartest idea but I couldn't even help myself. Yo Rondo, I said, what's going on over there? He turned to look at me, said nothing. Nah, come on man, what's so funny? He shook his head, I was just laughing about something. No shit, Rondo, I said, closing my book. I'm saying, what the hell was it? Rondell giggled again. I was just reading my Bible and thinking about how I was going to be all alone when I go to Mexico. But then my mom and dad told me it wasn't true. They said they was going to be right there with me, especially if I won all them pesos. But I told them it ain't the same thing because they ain't real people. And my dad got all pissed off and said, I see we ain't good enough for you now, Rondell. After everything we done, go on then, leave us be. He always saying things like that in Mexico, like he don't care none, but I know he care. That's my word. I stared back at Rondell with my mouth hanging open. I honestly couldn't believe what I was hearing. I had known all along his ass was special ed, even before I read his file, but now the dude was on some next level shit. He was seeing ghosts and hearing voices. Rondell laughed again, said, I know it sound weird to say it, Mexico, that's why I didn't want to tell you nothing. I wanted to see just how schizo he really was. Go ahead, Rondo. Tell me what they're saying now. They fighting about me. I nodded. Okay, they're fighting about you. What else? I sure wish I could see them or hear them like you can. They're just right there, Rondell said, pointing to the line of boulders that separated the sand from where the house has started. See them two big ones? That's my mom and dad, Mexico. The rocks, I said, turning back to him. He nodded. To him, it seemed simple. I looked at the rocks again. The two biggest ones were right next to each other facing us. I know it sound weird, he said again. Well, it don't sound normal, Rondell. It's what I say in my head, though, especially when I feel lonely. See, my mom's the little one who's smiling. And look how my dad be looking all mad. He always that way. Like he don't really care about nothing to do with me. But I know he loved me, Mexico. How do you know that, I said. Because he's always following me. Sometimes he's on a rock like that one, and sometimes he's in the clouds, 
or on a store window or a stain on a building, but he's always there with me every single place I go. I stared at the two big rocks. I looked at Rondell again and then went back at the rocks. If he looked hard enough, it really did seem like there were, were little faces there. Maybe Rondell was crazy, or maybe he wasn't. Maybe everybody else was crazy. Maybe he was just doing what he had to do to get through a hard life. The guy had either lived in foster care or prison ever since his grandma died. Who was I to say how somebody was supposed to deal with that kind of shit? Know what I think, I told him, nodding my head a little. I looked at him right in the eyes. What, he said, looking back at me. I think maybe that's one of the smartest things I've ever heard somebody say, man. I nodded a little more. I'm for real about that, Rondo. What is, he said back, a little frown going on his face. About your mom and dad. He didn't say anything. How you see them in different places, I said. Like they're always keeping an eye on you. Who you mean? I stared back at Rondell for a few long seconds. I said, are you serious? He looked at me even more confused. What you mean, he said. You know what, I shot back, and then I paused to spit in front of me and shake my head. I could feel myself getting pissed off. Just forget it, dog. Forget everything I just told you. I take it all back. God damn. What you mean, though, Mexico? I ain't get it. No shit, Rondell. You never do. That's the problem. You haven't understood one word I've said since the day I met you. It's a waste of my damn breath. If you just tell me. Nah, man, I cut him off. We done talking. He shrugged, and I shook my head. We were both quiet for a while. I went back to reading my book and Rondell went back to looking at his Bible, but I couldn't concentrate. I looked all around us again at the rusted border poles coming out of the water, the headlights shining across the waves. I even looked over at Rondell's imaginary parents. Being down here was such a trip. At the very end of America, the start of Mexico. Isn't that weird when you think about it that people back in the day actually decided the split should be right here? Not a few feet this way or that way, but right here at these poles we were leaning against. I pictured all these old time people in suits from both countries pointing down at the sand, speaking in their different languages. And I wondered which side actually built the fence and who had to pay for it. I looked up at the border patrol vans just sitting there in the sand facing Mexico, waiting for some Mexican guy's head to peek up out of the water as he swam around the boundary. What would they do if they saw it? Come running toward the water with a big ass net like a cartoon dog catcher? Or would they actually pull their guns? I was busy picturing how it would go down when Rondell leaned over and tapped me on the shoulder. Hey, Mexico, he said. Hey, what? Thanks. I turned to him. For what? For saying I was smart. I shook my head at him. I was just fucking with you, Rondo. Don't get too hyped on that shit. He nodded, dead serious. Nobody ever said nothing like that about me before. He went back to looking at his Bible. I stared at the guy for a minute or two. Schizo as his big ass was, I thought how I was probably going to miss him. All his questions and his made-up parents and the way he dunked on fools playing ball and called me Mexico and never complained about anything. But this was what I was going to remember more than anything, watching Rondell pretend to read the Bible. If I lived to be 110 and got the worst case of Alzheimer's possible and they shipped me out to some old fogey home in the boonies where all I could do was look at trees and drool all over myself, Still, man, I'm pretty sure I'd remember Rondell leaning over his damn Bible like this, scanning a finger across words he couldn't read. Yo, I meant that shit, Rondo, I said. You're smarter than you realize. Before he could look up at me, I went back to reading my book, hoping like hell he didn't say something to mess it up.